Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the first meeting in 2018 of the Social Security Committee. Can I remind everyone to turn off mobile phones and other devices to, or turn them to silent as they may disrupt the broadcasting. Um, we've received apologies this morning from our Deputy Convener, Polly McNeill, and also from Adam Tompkins, and we welcome Gordon Lindhurst as a former member of the committee who's attending this morning as Adam's substitute. The first item on the agenda um, is a decision to take items five, four, five and six in private. Um, can I have the agreement to do this all? Thank you. And agenda item two is the proposed draft public services reform, poverty and inequality commission order 2018. It's a proposal of um, consideration of the proposed draft order and we welcome to committee this morning, um, Gillian Cross of Child Poverty Lead, Paul Tyler, Head of Social Justice Strategy, and Colin Brown, Senior Principal Legal Officer, ECT Division. And I understand, uh, Ms Cross, you've got an opening statement for us. Um, as members will know, the draft Public Services Reform Poverty and Inequality Commission Scotland Order was laid on the 8th of November and published on the Scottish Parliament website. The 60-day consultation period comes to an end on the 23rd of January. The aim of the order is to expand the functions of the Poverty and Inequality Commission that's to be established via the Child Poverty Act on the 1st of July 2019. The commission to be established via the Act has functions that relate specifically to child poverty and the child poverty targets. So the key aim of the draft order is to expand that remit to cover poverty and inequality more broadly. The order also makes minor changes to the number of commissioners and the experience requirements of the commission as a whole to reflect that new wider remit. The Public Services Reform Scotland Act 2010 requires Scottish ministers to send copies of the draft order and explanatory material to any stakeholders that they think will be impacted by or will have an interest in the proposals. We've contacted a number of organisations that fall into this category, including the existing Poverty and Inequality Commission, um, the one that was established by ministers on the 3rd of July last year, um, Oxfam Scotland, the Child Poverty Action Group, the Poverty Alliance, the Equality and Human Rights Commission, and all the members of the former Ministerial Advisory Group on Child Poverty. To date, we've received comments from the existing commission, from Oxfam Scotland, the Poverty Alliance, Child Poverty Action Group and COSLA. Stakeholders have warmly welcomed the draft order. Um, for example, both CPAG and the Poverty Alliance have confirmed that they're satisfied with the draft order and they'll be seeking no further changes to it. Members will also recall that Oxfam Scotland were instrumental in developing proposals for a statutory commission. Their consultation response confirms that the draft order fulfils their initial expectations and they welcome the constructive nature in which they've been able to input into its development. A few minor comments and suggestions have been made um, and we'll consider these further and discuss them with stakeholders before we lay the final draft of the order. Um, and just to give you an example of that, the existing commission has recommended that we amend the order to include direct experience of poverty and inequality as one of the skills criteria that the Commission as a whole is required to fulfil. We'll look to revise that in the next draft of the order to make that explicit. Um, reminders were issued to interested parties at the beginning of January, so it's possible that we'll receive more consultation responses over the next few days. Um, but the responses so far have been positive, and we think that that's a result of the extensive engagement and collaboration that took place in advance of the order being published, um, which committee members will recall. And we'd also really like to thank the committee for their role in this work. I'm very happy to take any questions that members might have at this stage. Uh, thank you very much and thank you for the kind comments for the, the members of the committee before I was here and their contribution. Um, you mentioned a lot of stakeholders there. Can you tell us a bit more about how the consultation is open to ordinary members of the public and individuals to take part? Um, so the Public Service Reform Act requires the draft order to be laid in Parliament and for Scottish ministers to distribute copies to those with an interest in the proposals or those um, that might be affected. Uh, so we fulfilled those requirements. Um, there isn't a requirement for a full public consultation. However, the draft order was publicised by the Cabinet Secretary um, in the Chamber during Stage 3 proceedings and it was published on the Scottish Parliament website. Thank you. Thank you. Do any members have questions with regard to this? Uh, Jeremy? Yeah. Uh, uh, good morning and, and thank you very much. I, mean, I think this is a, a good piece of work which builds on 
what's happened in the bill. I'm interested in just in the point where you picked up right at the end um, about people being not part of a commission who have had experience. I mean, this may go slightly beyond your remit, but in regard to that, how do we get the appropriate individuals? H have you thought about how we get the appropriate individuals to do this? And we don't, with due respect, don't just end up with the usual suspects on this, but we actually are trying to grasp people's real life experience and, and, and how do we engage with that? And, and, and again, I, I mean, I understand your answer to the uh, convener, but probably not the average person is what's in stage three of a parliamentary debate. And it's how do we get beyond that and out to a wider range of community? Has any thought been given to that? Yeah, thanks. I think that's a really important question. Um, and as I say, we will make it explicit in the order that people with direct experience of poverty and inequality should um, be members of the Commission. But we'll also work closely with the public appointments team in the Scottish Government to make sure that the appointments process is designed in such a way that um, it's open to people from all backgrounds and that the person specs are designed in a way that, um, that doesn't put anyone off from applying. Um, and we'll take advice from stakeholders that have expertise in that area as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Oh, um, can I thank you very much for your attendance at committee this morning, and we'll pause for a few moments to let you um, leave. Thank you. Okay, um, we're back in session and can I ask the committee if they want to make any representations to the Minister about the proposed draft order? Any comments at all on what we've heard? Everybody content with progress so far? Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Um, our next agenda item is uh, on subordinate legislation. It's a consideration of the Universal Credit Claims and Payments Scotland Amendments Regulation 2017, SSI 2017-436. And members agreed at the meeting on the 21st of December that no further evidence was required regarding this order and uh, ask if members are then content to note the instrument today. Thank you. And um, we can now move into private session.